welcome to Get the Word in Your Face International. This is Pastor Cheryl Jackson coming to you with a word from the Lord. God is good. He is worthy to be praised. He is the Most High God, El Elyon, El Che, the Living God, the Almighty God, who is with us, who is to us, and through us. Jesus promised that He would never leave us nor forsake us. He is with us where we are. If we're concerned about people all the way across the world, if we're concerned about our children going to school, if we're concerned about anything in this life, we hand it over to Him, the one whom we know is our salvation and loves to save. The Lord loves to deliver. It's it's one of the things He, he just loves to do it. He's not willing that any man should perish in this life and be thrown into ever into a, the lake of fire and suffer a second judgment. He doesn't want mankind to suffer death. But he gave us a choice to believe that he is who he says he is and that he will do what he said he will do. And all we have to do is come to him. Humble our hearts before Him. Take that mind, that will and emotions of ours, and make it subject to God and His promises. And His promises. The Lord promises His goodness toward us. If we will read Psalm 23, we see the Lord is our shepherd. We lack nothing in Him. Nothing. He causes us to lay down in green pastures. He leads us beside peaceful waters. That's what he does. He, he wants to restore our soul and, and give us life and peace. It's an inward peace. There, there is trouble in this world all around you, whatever it might be. He'll be with you in the trouble. He, he, this is a part of our salvation. He won't leave us. He won't forsake us. He's made us alive in him. We were once dead because of sins. Now we're alive because of what Jesus Christ has done. We're alive because of the Son, Jesus, the Anointed One. He has passed from death to life. We have passed from death to life. I, I thank the Lord Jesus Christ for going to that cross and suffering death and taking the sting out of it. Proving that there's nothing too hard for God. Death is not too hard for God. The death we're talking about today is spiritual blindness. Being blind and being born in this world. As we were born into this world, we were blind and we could not see the living God. Romans talks about how there is a, you know, the evidence of God is all around. And there are times in our lives, as children, even, even especially as children, that we recognize that there's someone greater than all that we see and all that we've ever heard and all that we've ever known. For a moment, for an inkling, maybe a few times, you'll know that God is. And there is the time to seize Him, to take hold of Him. And let him be who he is. Let him show you life. Let him take you from death to life. It's a good thing to surrender our heart to him. To know him in all of our ways. He knows how to direct our path. We have to take every concern in this life that would trouble us, that would throw us off to the side. And bring our whole being into, the, into his presence. You know, you can't have a little worry. You just can't have it. If we're anxious about anything, we bring it before Him. And with prayer and thanksgiving, with prayer and supplication and thanksgiving, we make known our request to God who will keep our heart and mind. He'll keep us in perfect peace because we love Him and we trust Him. I was going to read a passage from 1 John chapter 3. First John chapter 3, verse, starting in verse 13. 
Jesus, well, John is talking, he's saying, Marvel not, my brethren, if the whole world hate you. And I just remember Jesus saying that, that you know, that the world is going to hate you. It, it's all right. Don't freak out. Don't panic. It's a part of this life. Okay. We know that we have passed from death unto life because we love the brethren. We know that we have passed from death to life because we love each other. This love is a very powerful thing. We know that we pass from death to life because we love the brethren. We have loved he that loves not, his brother abides not. Abides, he, it says, it, it, he abides in death. What is death? Death is, is separation from God, it is living with your mind set in sinful nature we've been given life by 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 god by jesus christ the spirit of god is teaching us how to live in the nature of god but we have to submit our heart and our mind to him to his will god's will you remember the 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 disciples prayer our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Holy, holy, holy is your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done. I, you know, it's about his will and his desire for our lives. He's put in us his nature by the Holy Spirit. And when we have the nature of the Holy Spirit, we can... We, we can just, we see each other mess up and we still love each other. We're there to help our brother or sister to see how we can help them get back on track. We're there to pray for them and pray with them. You know, we're there to fast with them, fast for them. If they can't see, then we're going to do what we can to pull them from the fire so that they don't get stuck that way. We have the power of prayer we have the the right we are the righteousness of god and the righteous the prayers of the righteous they avail very much they do so much they turn things around the lord hears our prayers and he answers them what does this have to do with passing from death to life we were once in the world we do sometimes mess like mess up our walk with God and have to repent. I, I, yet just yesterday, I was in the car with my friend and I, I was, uh, we were talking and I, you know, sometimes when it's quiet, you just need to be quiet. You don't need to just find something to say. And then I started talking about the neighbor next door and I was like, I didn't even catch it until this morning. Maybe I caught it when I came in, but I wasn't really paying attention. But this morning before I got on my knees, I, you know, I just knew that I was gossiping and that some of the stuff I said wasn't even, you know, it was really none of my business. Even if any of it was true, how am I supposed to know? I don't live in that house. The greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. I repent. I, I, I told the Lord, look, forgive me. For leaning out, you know, just gossiping. For talking about people. That is not my business. My business is to always pray. And if somebody should ask me a question about what somebody else's business is. You know, I can divert that. And we can walk in another direction. <laughs> we're going to say we're not going to talk about anybody. I really don't know that information. But keep them in your prayers. So you could say that the test of passing from death to life is love. We know that we love, that we know that we pass from death to life because of our love for one another. 
We understand that the world's going to hate us. We don't marvel about this stuff when they point their fingers, when they laugh at you, when they just won't get with you. But we pray. We pray because we don't want to see anybody going into that lake of fire. We were once in the world, and if we're awake, we're awake because of, of because Jesus woke us up. He gives life to as many as he as many as he calls. It, well, as far as I know, the Lord has called the whole entire world. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever would believe on him would not perish but have everlasting life. He's not going into the lake of destruction, but he has life. Whosoever is the whole entire world. Whosoever will hear. But those of us who are lights in Christ, who are alive in Christ, who have passed from death to life, ought to be so in love with each other, we're helping one another in all these areas of our lives. No one of us should be lacking anything because one person has and the other person has not. We should be living that book the, like the book of Acts when when they were when no one lacked anything because they were everything was all like <laughs> it was shared and it doesn't mean the person who had more gave every single cent and sat there broke while the other person had all their goods but that other person just didn't lack the stuff that they needed and nobody took advantage of each other they saw a need and filled it. This is how you know that you pass from, from death to life. Your love for one another. Let's read a little bit more in verse 14. It says, We know that we have passed from... Oh, I was already there, right? <laughs> but I'll read it again then. We know that we have passed from death to life because we love the brethren. We, He that loves not his brother abides, not, abides in death. Whosoever hates his brother is a murderer. And we know that no murderer hath eternal life abiding in him. Hereby perceive we the love of God, because he has he laid down his life for us. And we ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. But whosoever has this world's good and sees his brother have need, and shuts up his bowels of compassion from him, how dwells the love of God in him? My little children, let us not love in word, neither in tongue, but in deed and in truth. And hereby we know that we are of the truth, and shall pass. And, and, and hereby we know that we are of truth, and shall assure our hearts before Him. For if our God, if our heart condemn us, God is greater than our hearts, and knows all things. Beloved, if our hearts condemn us uh, not, then we have the confidence, we have confidence towards God. And whatsoever we ask, we receive of him, because we keep his commandments and do those things that are pleasing in his sight. I'm going to leave it right there. Oh, wait. And no, verse 23, I'm sorry. And this is the commandment that he, that we should believe on the name of the Son of on the Son, Jesus Christ, and love one another as he gave us commandments. And he that keeps this commandment, his commandments dwells in him, and he in them, and hereby we know that he abides in us by the Spirit which he gave us. This is so important. And this is how we know that we pass from death, from death to life, because the love of God abides in us and we are lovers of one another i i have not seen this so much in the body of christ uh, what i've seen is this if you're not like me and i'm not like you we don't have anything we won't barely talk we give one each other one of those patsy hugs and walk away we say that we can trust one another but when we when we tell each other everything about ourselves and what's going on in our house that one other person shuns that other person rather than praying about the situation and being helpful they become prideful and and and, and hateful toward the person or persons who are having trouble in their home or have sin in their house we need to be lovers one of another 
that we can help one another to help one another and pray for one another you know how many people would come out and really be free in the Lord how many strongholds would be pulled down the Lord says that you know one can take down a thousand we are not uh, the two can take down ten thousand we are not uh, uh, fighting against flesh and blood we are w w fighting and warring against spiritual powers and principalities things that are coming coming into our homes and invading our minds inviting our consciousness and and making us guilty making us condemned but God says we are not condemned we, we, we are not condemned we we belong to God and we are helpers one to another God has not given us a spirit of fear, and if anybody should have a spirit of fear, the other person who doesn't have that spirit of fear on them should be praying for the person who does. Giving them scriptures, helping them along. You don't just give somebody scriptures and walk away somewhere. But you pray. You pray, and you ask the Holy Spirit to come into their lives all the more so. We can ask for wisdom and spiritual, what is it? We can ask for wisdom from God for that person. We can say, Father, open their eyes to see your will for their lives, see the knowledge of you. Show them what's bothering them, Lord. Lord, help them to come out of that sin. Deliver them from the power of the dog. Deliver them. You can go into the scriptures and find the word of deliverance for your brothers and sisters. I don't care what age group we're in. We're all on the same timeline. If we if we are alive today in this world, whatever day it is that you hear this, we are on the same timeline. I don't care if the person is one years old. I don't care if that person is 103 years old. Whatever the age is, we pray for one another. There's no barriers between us. There's no difference between us. We're breathing the same oxygen. We're walking on the same path toward Jesus Christ, toward getting into the kingdom of God. And all of us have to work out our soul salvation with fear and trembling, but we are not alone while we do it. Someone should always be praying for somebody else. I'm, I would say that, I, yes, I am guilty for not praying for somebody else. I didn't understand it until I read the scriptures, that we ought to love one another just as Christ loves us, just as the Father loves the whole world. He doesn't love sin. He's not in saying, oh, come into my kingdom and be dirty and be filthy. He washes us with the water of his word, and we are not no longer living in the nature of, of in, to, in living in sinful nature. We're living in his nature. As we abide in him, he abides in us, and his nature is love fruit of the spirit is the number one the first fruit is love and inside of love are all the other fruits of the spirit because without love you don't have anything at all it's you know there are people who have self-control and have no love yeah there are people that have peace and they have no love they, well I can't say I can have peace without love but they, they can make it look like they have what they need Peace, peace isn't having things. Peace is being safe. Peace is being secure. So having a lock on my door, front door, doesn't do it. Having, having money in the bank doesn't make me safe. But being with somebody who is greater than I am, that makes me safe. The Lord is with us. He's the God of Jacob. He's our, our refuge. He's the strength of our life. He's not going to let us go that easy. But we must abide in Him and abide in His perfect love. We must know that the Lord God Almighty, He loves us. I mean, He really, really loves us. He really wants to keep our heart and mind and fulfill his promise to us he's not going to leave us he's not going to throw us out he's going to fill us with his agape love he's going to 
pour out into our hearts. Look at it again. It says in verse 24, And he that keeps his commandments dwells in him, and he in him, and hereby we know that he that he abides in us by the Spirit which he has given us. The Spirit of God is the guarantee of our entrance into the kingdom of God. He's our guarantee of the end of our entrance into the kingdom of God. This is the only way that we're going to get in. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. And we can accept Jesus Christ and say that he's Lord and not bow our heart to hear how God is calling us to hear. We hear by the Spirit of God. We hear by the Spirit of God. We are, we are accepted in God and we hear by the Spirit of God. We get a spiritual language. We get wisdom. We get knowledge from on high by the Spirit that dwells in us. And we no longer live by the Spirit of the world. We live by the Spirit that is in Christ Jesus. Jesus.